Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and I've got 13 new things to know about the new DJI Mini 2. Now the Mini 2 is the second in the Mini lineup. Last November or so, they released the Mavic Mini, but this time they ditched the Mavic naming and just kept it with the Mini 2. Now the Mini 2 is very, very similar to the original Mini, except for the 13 new things I'm gonna talk about, but there are some things that have sort of stayed the same. Number one, the 249 gram weight of this, which keeps it under certain like regulatory rules, depending on which country you're on, uh, mostly around registration and licensing. That remains the same. That's also 199 grams though in Japan where they have a smaller battery, but it's the same shell otherwise. And then number two, the pricing is at 449 US dollars for the base unit. And then it jumps up for the bundle. I'm throwing those prices on the screen right now. So with that, let's get into number one, which is the new 4K mode. Uh, so in the past, you were limited to 2.7K, uh, 30 frames per second. Now you have 4K at 30 frames per second. And of course, right now you're looking at a bunch of 4K footage I've shot all over the place over the last uh, little while here. And by itself, you're like, oh, that looks pretty darn nice. However, it's not until you put the footage side by side that you can really see the difference between the two of them. In this case, on the Mavic Mini, I shot it at 2.7K. And in the Mini 2, I shot it the full 4K, the highest resolutions offered on both of them. And you can see it looks just way crispier on the Mini 2. But more importantly, it does a much better job of dealing with the highlights and the shadows. And you can see that in particular in this one section here where the cloud shadow on the field where you've got this well-lit section ahead of the cloud shadow and then behind it you have the cloud shadow and you can see that the Mini 2 does a much better job of the lighting of that scene. Uh, again, just all the defaults across the board and it looks really, really sharp. Number two on the list is the addition of RAW photo support. You can now go ahead and take both JPEG as well as JPEG plus RAW where it shoots both of those photos at the same time. It's just an option that you'll toggle in the menus and then it'll keep that option for all your future photo taking needs. Now the benefit of having raw photo support is that you can usually get more out of it in post-production, so in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you may be using, uh, to go ahead and get the lighting correctly or get the colors right. Uh, you can do more work in that afterwards compared to not. Now I've dropped a couple of photos down in the description there in a Dropbox share if you want to look at some of those and play with them yourself. Next up is a change in the transmission protocol. And that may sound like a boring thing, but it's really not. Uh, so in the case of the original Mini, it was using Wi-Fi, basically an extended version of Wi-Fi to go between the drone and your controller that you had right here versus in the Mini 2, it's using OcuSync, which is something that DJI has typically reserved for their higher end drones over the years. And it gives a much better signal, both in terms of resolution, but also in terms of the quality of the signal itself. And I saw that today when I was shooting these drones side by side up in the air for that 4K shot, that the original mini signal was not quite as crispy, a little more latent, versus the OcuSync one was like spot on perfect the entire time. And these two drones were then about a meter of each other, so I know all the conditions were exactly the same. Next up on the list is an increase in the drone's speed or specifications for the speed. Now speed on the Mavic series tends to come in kind of three buckets. Uh, number one is sport mode, number two is normal mode, and number three is cinema mode. In this case, I'm primarily concerned with normal and sport mode since those are the faster of the two. What we see here is a bump in normal mode from 29 kilometers an hour up to 36 kilometers an hour, so relatively minor, but sport mode goes from 47 kilometers an hour to 57 kilometers an hour. Now that's certainly useful going from point A to point B, uh, especially like taking sport mode to get back from a shot or something like that, but it's also useful with wind resistance. Uh, and so I put that to the test yesterday. You can check out the full video up there in the corner where I took it out to basically 60 kilometer hour winds. That's like the official recorded wind speed uh, after I got back and I was like, whoa, that, that was pretty crazy. And indeed was pretty crazy. So you wanna check out that video for all that fun there. Now, a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, whatever the case may be, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next up, DJI has added zoom capabilities to the Mini 2. Now, it's not optical zoom, like it's not actually a lens change or anything like that. Rather, it's just digital zoom. So they're taking the full resolution they have and essentially just cropping it in and cropping it in again. Uh, and there's a couple different modes there. One, you can go down to 1080p and get 2x lossless zoom. So it's just simple crop without going ahead and uh, digitizing at all. And then you can go again up to 4x where you start to get lossy, uh, which means you're gonna start to get a little bit less clarity there. 
in 2.7K, you can go to 2X as well, uh, lossless, because again, they're using that full resolution. And then 4K, you can go 2X as well. Uh, in that case, that is lossy because they're just zooming in like you would normally. In general, I'd recommend just shooting in 4K and then going ahead and cropping yourself because that's all they're really doing. But there are cases where you may just want to be quick and simple on something uh, and just have it zoomed in and be done with it. Next, we got one of my favorite things on the list here, which is they've USB-C'd all the things. Uh, on the original Mavic Mini, you can see it was micro USB. There we go, micro USB, which was kind of disappointing. Uh, but on the Mini 2, it's USB-C everything. So USB-C charging on the back of the drone, USB-C charging on the remote controller, uh, and then you can go ahead and have USB-C charging on the three battery pack uh, charger as well. So you can basically take this then and USB-C into this and then charge everything else. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, and just to be clear, you can charge the battery straight in the drone itself on the Mini, which is really handy. Something I wish DJI would allow you to do on their higher end drones. So hopefully we'll see that down the road at some point. Next up, you'll notice that there's a new controller for the Mini 2. Uh, of course, it looks quite different than the original Mavic Mini controller. They move the phone up to the top. It has a bracket that goes up and down like this versus sort of the arm thing in the past. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use with cases, though it's still kind of a wash depending on your particular phone. Uh, there's also changes in the button layouts. So for example, you've got a dedicated function button there. Uh, over here, you've got an ability to switch between photo mode and video mode. You've got the modes right there on the very front for cine, normal, and sport. Uh, and then on the top here, you can see that you still have the gimbal wheel right there um, on this side over there. And over here, you've got the ability to take a picture as well as to go ahead and start recording. So those two buttons are basically just consolidated together versus in the past, they were split out into two separate buttons. Moving to another hardware change up is a very slight increase in battery time uh, from 30 minutes to 31 minutes. That's the claim specification there. Uh, and what's notable about this though is that the batteries have changed as well. So the gray batteries are the Mini 2 batteries. The black ones here are the original Mavic Mini batteries. And if you look at them side by side, you see they have changed uh, a little bit of the battery capacity. They've actually decreased the battery capacity. Uh, the old batteries are 2400 milliamp hours. The new ones are 2250, but they also changed some of the voltages alongside of that. So through all that battery magic, you've gone ahead and increased the battery capacity. Uh, now I did for the fun of it, take my old Mini battery and stick it in the Mini 2 it didn't blow up. I flew just fine and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if that's supported or not, but technically it does work at least until DJI makes it not work anymore. Okay, next we've got a pile of new photo modes. To begin, there is a 360 degree photo mode that takes 26 different photos and compiles them all together. Uh, then there is a 180 degree mode, which takes seven photos and compiles those all together. Uh, and that's in addition to a complete wide angle shot as well. And you can see some of these examples right now. Uh, I will say they looked really, really sharp. I mean, they're very, very sharp. Even on a crazy windy day, uh, the very first wind wheel that you saw there, the winds were easily 30, 35 kilometers an hour and it had no problem making that look really, really, really sharp. I've also dropped that down below in that Dropbox share with the raw photos as well. And what's notable here is that previously you could create your own panoramas and stuff like that, but then you had to stitch them together after the fact. It was really sort of a pain in the butt. Atop that, there is another new set of non-panorama modes. Uh, first off is the auto exposure bracket mode that takes three photos and then squishes them together. Basically, it takes one that's a little underexposed, a little bit overexposed, and then one in the middle there, like just the three bears or whatever. Meanwhile, back on the video side, there is another new mode there uh, beyond just the 4K, which is the addition of the boomerang mode to quick shots. Now the boomerang is sort of like a circle, but it's like an oblong circle. It comes really close to you and then goes out far away and then comes close to you again. And you'll find that under that quick shot mode. Now what you won't find, unfortunately, is active track. It's still not in the mini series, uh, likely because it has no obstacle avoidance sensors in it. Uh, so no change to that particular side of it. Still, despite that, I've got a video that should drop probably tomorrow, sometime up in the corner there too, maybe tonight if I'm on top of things, where I show you how to do active track style shots using the quick shots with a whole bunch of trickery. So you'll definitely wanna check out that video to see what you can pull off, including shots kind of just like this. Next up, we got a minor change to the hardware, in particular the props. So if we move this out of the way here and put the two drones side by side, what you'll notice is that the prop colors are changed, which is nice because you can at least see the outline there a little more clearly of the prop when it's spinning. The downside though, is that it's the exact same orange for all the props. Versus you look last year on the original mini, you'll see that the coloring, the striping is different. So a double stripe versus a single stripe versus single, single, single. Now there's a very slight difference right there. If you look, you'll see this have a tiny little stripe right there that's barely visible. Uh, it's actually not silver. The camera just makes it look like it because it's reflecting. But to me, that's just 
kind of totally stupid. When you go to grab extra props, you want to make sure you got one set of each. And so you got to be really careful when you're grabbing these props here to make sure you actually do have uh, one set of each. Okay, last but not least, no, actually, it's it's definitely least, but we're going to talk about it anyways because it's new. Uh, this is the drone strap, and the drone strap keeps the props under control when it's in your bag or something like that. So what you do is you go ahead and you fold it in like this, just like normal. No big deal, right? You're still with me so far. And then you put things like this, the props, take the props again, you put them, this already takes way too much work, by the way. Uh, and then you put the strap on there. Come on, go the right direction, uh, wrong direction. There we go. And presto, no more props shaking around. I, I appreciate the gesture. Then you take the gimbal cover, snap it in place. Also, you would normally turn the drone off before you tied it up and bound it, but 50 shades of gray. Anyways, hopefully you found this review interesting or useful, whatever the case may be. You can also check out my full written review down in the description there. I've got plenty more details on that. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. I've got a couple more videos coming out on this, if you haven't already seen them, as well as a few more things over the next little while that you will not want to miss. With that, have a good one.